Hello, hello. Good afternoon. Uh, before we get started, if I could please ask everyone to um, put your phones on vibrate. Um, if there are uh, any particular special needs, uh, just for administrative purposes, the facilities are down this way. There's some water here in the in the back of the of the room, and um, we should. Uh, so I think we'll just go ahead because the congressman is certainly uh, has a very busy schedule. We'd like to go ahead and, and get started this morning, this very uh, joyous occasion for us. My name is Rick Noriega, and I'm the president and CEO of Avance, and I'm very proud and humbled to be with you here this morning. Uh, let me begin by welcoming everyone uh, to this historic event, Unlocking America's Future press conference. If you're here in person or one of our many friends around the country joining us via the web, thank you all for being with us. I'd like to also recognize um, our, uh, our employees that have done so much work uh, to put this together, uh, Cleo and, the, and, and Magda and Glendy and the rest of the staff, Fluent Strategies, who's done a superb job in helping us get this organized. In a moment, you'll be introduced to our research partners uh, and our re-grant partners as, as, as a part of this grant. Uh, and so, uh, to, to everyone, uh, welcome and thank you again. At this time, I'd like to introduce Avance's national chairman of the board, under whose leadership has really bolted our organization onto the national stage because of the work that we do for our families, San Antonio's own native son, uh, Mr. Dean Aguien. Well, thank you, Rick, for that kind introduction. I want to talk a little bit about this organization that I've known to come to know very, very well and, and to love and support. Uh, Avance is uh, one of the oldest and largest early childhood education programs in, in the country. And since 1973, Avance has continued to in provide innovative education and family support services to predominantly Hispanic families in low-income and at-risk uh, communities. What began in a 500-unit public housing development serving 35 families in San Antonio has expanded to more than 100 program sites across Texas, California, and New Mexico. With the recent regrant that we're going to talk about today, Avance has added seven additional states just in the past four months, providing even more families with uh, hope for a better future. The Comprehensive Parent-Child Education Program provides community, economic development, positive parenting skills and behavior, school readiness, parental school involvement, adult education, and civic engagement for simultaneous impact on both the parent, which is very important, and the child. Um, the program has improved the school readiness of children and has a strong impact on Latino families through partnerships with community-based organizations. Today, we're very lucky to be joined by a special guest, a longtime advocate for early childhood education, Congressman Charlie Gonzalez. Uh, Congressman Gonzalez is currently in his seventh term in the United States Congress as the representative of the 20th District of Texas. The Congressman serves as the chair of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus and is also a member of the New Democrats Coalition. He's a senior Democratic whip in the House Democratic leadership and has also served as a Texas uh, regional whip for the Democratic Caucus and importantly also he's been chair of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Civil Rights Task Force since 1999. He serves on the powerful Energy and Commerce Committee and the Committee on House Administration. As chairman of the board of Avance, let me say how fortunate we are to have Congressman Gonzalez, to have not only a congressman like him representing our national headquarters, but more importantly, our interests. Congressman Gonzalez. Dean, thank you very much. And, and the reason that Dean knows so much about me is that he, he didn't tell you that 
he worked with Democratic leadership on the floor, so he was, and he's worked on the Hill. But uh, prior to going in the private sector, uh, he was part of the leadership uh, team, so he kept tabs on us. So he knows a whole lot about each and every one of us, <laughs> what we need, <laughs> where we're vulnerable, and everything else. But it's a great pleasure to be here today, and I, <clears throat> I'm going to be brief because we're going to have some folks here today that are going to tell you about uh, what is Avance's, uh, I guess if you look into it, the new uh, phase uh, of their whole uh, venture for all these years that started in San Antonio. So I'm going to have to take uh, some uh, pride here that many things start in San Antonio and then spread nationally, and they're all wonderful and they're positive, and I'm so glad that Avance still considers San Antonio its headquarters and its home, even though its vision and its services expand way beyond San Antonio and the confines of my city. But we were the first ones to be blessed by their hard work, and we're going to have someone that will give testimony to those days in 1973-75 in that at range, uh, how that impacted a family's life and that it continues to pay dividends for the other generations. And I think that's the most important lessons for all, for all of us here today. I want to acknowledge something. I was talking to Rick. <clears throat> Rick knows this very well because uh, he served in the Texas legislature, but it's just not what's happening in Texas. It's happening in every state. And you know that funding for education is taking huge cuts. It's going to happen at the national level, too. That's all. You know, I could give you more bad news, but you already know about it, which means <clears throat> that organizations such as, uh, as Avance will loom even larger in the educational picture. We need to start really thinking where our assets and resources are. So the W.K. Kellogg, thank you very much for identifying Avance to making that kind of contribution and expanding its, its vision, but the ben benefits way beyond what it presently finds itself doing. This is incredible, and it couldn't come at a more important juncture when it comes to education. I do want to share one story with you. I'm not going to tell you which superintendent. It seems like no one in uh, administration or superintendents of school districts can say anything anymore without it being controversial. But I always have at least two meetings a year with my superintendents. I happen to represent most of the San Antonio Independent School District. Edgewood School District, and so on. So you, if you're familiar at all <clears throat> with uh, those school districts and the challenges they face, and a lot of it is based on income, and we need to really acknowledge that and how we fund schools. But in talking to one of the superintendents, we were talking about the diversity in a modern-day public school classroom and how more difficult that is to teach to that kind of group. It's really amazing. It's totally different than when I went to school. Uh, and it's good because schools are much better than when I went to school, to be, again, quite honest with you. And so I told him, well, you know, you, I know you, you, you have these challenges. Parents <clears throat> uh, want to send their kids to the best schools, and I also know you have competition. You have the private schools, and I'm not, you know, saying that private schools are not a good thing. They're all good. They all have a purpose, of course. But most of our kids get an education in the, private, uh, in the public school sector. I said, so I know you got the private schools. I know you got the charter schools. And I know that they take many times because they have more of a uniform student body, it's more homogeneous and such, they don't face the same challenges. I said, so I, I guess what I'm getting at, Dr. So-and-so, is that there must be this brain drain. That was my mistake to actually describe it that way. So, oh, no, no, Charlie. We don't suffer from a brain drain. We suffer from a parent drain, a parent drain. And what he was telling me was that that is where it begins, and many times that's where it ends for a child. The greatest indicator of success in education for that child will be the parent. That's an eternal truth. Avance, recognizing that many years ago, dedicated itself to that proposition. And so we're here today, and the amazing thing is that it's grown as it has and is addressing populations throughout this country. I know that Rick and others may be discussing the partnerships that they're, they're joining, expanding their focus beyond Hispanic communities, right, into African American, American Indian communities, and that will have its own set of challenges. But there is something very, very unique. If you ever needed an engaged parent, it has to be in those particular communities. Just for Hispanics, I will tell you now that 20% of students, K through 12, in this country are, gonna, are Hispanic. I'll leave you with one thought. 
Until this country understands that we're in this together, we are not going to succeed. So when I talk about someone that might come that has an opportunity to go to a private school or a charter school or to the richest and best public school district in all of the United States, I have an investment in that child. But I have even a greater investment where most of the children are getting their education and where the greatest challenge lies, and that happens to be in my community, like in San Antonio, and similarly situated communities. So today, it is a great pleasure that I join you. Congratulations to you guys. Congratulations to all the partners. The new research that's going to be done, the new communities are going to be reached. This is all good, and it's good for everyone, because as I said, we are in this together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman. We also have a special message that was sent um, by Mayor Julian Castro. Um, just a few brief remarks on the mayor. Um, I think a lot of folks have recognized him um, throughout the country as a rising star. Mayor Castro was elected mayor on May 9, 2009, and at 35 years old, he, the San Antonio native was the youngest mayor in the country, and he's still the youngest mayor of a top 50 American city. I think one of the things that he's proudest of is his public education, and he'll tell you that when you have conversations with him. He's a graduate of Jefferson High. Uh, he and his brother went there. I think, you know, on a personal note, one of the most interesting things he ever said to me was that he was ninth in his class and his brother was uh, 15th in his class. And he said, well, first of all, he, he bragged, at least I was higher than my brother. <laughs> But, um, you know, he, he was very honest. He said, you know, I'm not, I wasn't valedictorian or salutatorian. And I went to Stanford. But I often think, what if the eight kids that were ahead of me in that class at Jefferson had, a, had applied to Stanford? And a lot of that was because he said, I had a strong parental guidance that told me, you should, you know, apply to these schools and maybe you'll get accepted. And, you know, that's a lot of what we're talking about now. So. With that, uh, we're going to hear a little message from the mayor, and thank you. Hi, I'm Mayor Julian Castro. I'm sorry that I couldn't be with you for this momentous occasion today, but I wanted to take a moment to commend Avance for 38 years of investing in the future of America. In today's 21st century global economy, brain power is the new currency of success. And for the last 38 years, no organization has done a better job, particularly in minority communities, of creating that brain power than Avance. As mayor of San Antonio that gave birth to Avance, I've heard many stories over the years by young men and young women who were able to get a good education, graduate from high school, and go on to college and reach the American dream because they got a very strong start through Avance. Avance has done great work ensuring that parents are effective first teachers of their young ones. As their work expands, I have no doubt that thousands and thousands of more young people will be able to get that great education, reach their American dream, and make a fantastic contribution to our nation. It'll have a profound impact, not just on local communities, but on the American economy. Congratulations, Avance. Thank you. As most of you know, to have success in any endeavor, you have to have strong leadership. And so with that, one of the biggest challenges that I had in, uh, in administering this particular uh, momentous gift was to ensure that we had uh, the right person at the helm. And so I'm um, pleased to uh, recognize uh, my colleague, uh, who is the uh, program director for the Unleashing America uh, Potential Grant, and that's Ms. Magna Santos. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. What an honor to follow the great Congressman Gonzalez as well. This is a glorious day. I'm just really excited to be here, as I'm sure you are as well. A little under a year ago, I was honored by being accepted into the Avance family and being hired by Rick Noriega as the project manager of this most amazing and exciting project. 
The project has a twofold mission. The first mission is that Avance will expand its parent-child education program into 12 new Hispanic communities throughout the United States over the next three years. We are calling those partnerships re-grant partners. Avance received a major grant from the Kellogg Foundation, and we are taking some of those funds and re-granting them to 12 new partners. The first set of four partners were selected in the spring of 2010. I'm sorry, 2011. I forget time really flies when you're having fun. <laughs> um, all of our partners did compete in a very, very competitive process. They responded to a request for proposal, which resulted in Avanza receiving 51 applications. Those 51 applications represented 26 states plus Puerto Rico. We're confident that the next two cycles, in 2012 and in 2013, to complete our partnerships with the Hispanic communities will resu result in as many applications as well. I would like to introduce today our 2010 re-grant partners. We have representing El Buen Pastor in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, Ms. Mary Bolton. Could you stand, please? <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Representing the Ready by Five organization in Yakima, Washington, we have Helen Marie Skind. <laughs> Representing the Family Partnership Center in Bradenton, Florida, we have Mr. David Potter. <laughs> and finally, representing Casa Guanajuato in Moline, Illinois, we have Michael Woods. <laughs> Each of our re-grant partners will be receiving a $50,000 grant that they can use in order to establish themselves and start delivering the Hispanic version of our program in their communities in September. We're really, really excited about that. Uh, we hope to also retain them as licensees after this first year because we're sure that this is going to be successful. There may be some adaptations even though they are Hispanic communities as we are, but I'm sure the Hispanics in Illinois and in Washington live a lot differently than the Hispanics in San Antonio, Texas. So we're really, really looking forward to see what those adaptations may be. The second part of our mission, and it's just as exciting, is that we will pilot the Hispanic version of our program in three new ethnic communities. The targeted groups are an African American group, an American Indian group, and an Hispanic non-Mexican group. We have two of our research partners with us today, and I would like to introduce them now. Representing the non-Hispanic, or the non-Mexican group, I'm sorry, from uh, Newark, New Jersey, La Casa de Don Pedro, we have Executive Director Edward Hernandez. <laughs> Representing our African-American group, the Excellence Baby Academy in Brooklyn, New York, we have Ms. Robin Smith, Executive Director. Our Native American group could not be with us today, but we have selected the Fond du Lac Band of Lake Superior Chippewa in, Clu in Cloquet, Minnesota. And stay tuned because we will be hearing more about our research partners over the next four years. What Avance is going to do in partnership with the National Institute for Early Education Research out of Rutgers University is study what those adaptations uh, would be required to be made to our program in order to make them culturally appropriate in the new communities. And we're looking forward to that success as well. I would like to introduce from near university also our partner, Alexandra Figueres. <laughs> Thank you. Avanza believes that there are no barriers, there should be no barriers. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you live, nor does it matter what your ethnicity is. The rule applies the same to one and all. As a parent, you must become your child's first teacher and role model. As a parent, you must get involved with your child's education immediately. And as a parent, you must make your home the first classroom for your child. It's as simple as that. 
So we're really, really excited. I could stand here all day and tell you just how wonderful our program is, and it is. It really is. Um, but I would like for you to sit back and view this short video where you will hear from some of the Avancet graduates. And after that, I'm honored to also be able to introduce our Avancet 2010 Mother of the Year, Mrs. Elida Galindo. And she will tell you her success story as well. Thank you so much. Perseverance has been the story of Elida's life. She was living in housing projects, raising three small children when she learned of Avance. It was during the program that she received the encouragement necessary to continuing her education. After graduating from Avance, she then obtained her GED before earning her nursing certification. Today, Galindo was a nurse at the Bear County Jail for the University Hospital, where she has worked for 20 years. A mother of five, Elida's youngest daughter, Elida, is serving our country. She recently returned from Haiti and is now stationed at Fort Bragg in North Carolina. Elida's oldest son is Vicente Sanchez, who also served in our military. Also an Avanza grad, Vicente first earned an associate's degree before getting his bachelor's from UTSA. Thank you. It is a great honor to be here and represent Avance San Antonio. 37 years ago, Avance knocked on my door, inviting me to attend classes at Avance. I said no, I wasn't interested. I was 18. I hadn't finished the seventh grade. I had three small children, one walking, one crawling, and one in my arms. I didn't have time to go to classes. But Avance was persistent. They kept coming to my door. They kept telling me they would watch my children while I attended classes. Avance then was located in the Midasol Housing Project. It was on 112 Randall Street. They didn't have much funding that time, but they did everything they could. And I am proud to say that they affected my life. When they say unlocking America's potential, they unlocked mine. At that time, I was on welfare, receiving food stamps, no job, no money, no transportation. And let me tell you a little bit about my family history. My father was from Nueva Sacetas, Guadalajara, Mexico. He never learned to read or write. He never spoke a word of English. My mother was from Lockhart, Texas. She only went to the second grade. So the emphasis was never on education. Out of 11 children, only four graduated high school. We were just trying to survive. Like I said, education was never an emphasis. Our parents didn't know how to hug. They didn't know how to nurture children. They were too busy trying to survive. Again, going back to Avance, they kept telling me that I could still return to go back to school. I was 18. I had low self-esteem. I had no ambition. When I grew up, I had brothers that were shooting heroin at 12 years old. Like I said, we were surrounded by drugs. We were in the housing projects. For those who don't know, the housing projects were built on la over landfills. The housing projects were infested with roaches, with rats. I tell my children, I said, when, we were, when they were small and I had a pot of beans on the, on the oven, on the stove, if a roach fell into the pot, I couldn't afford to throw the whole pot of beans. So I just took one roach out and stirred the pot. They were very good. <laughs> <laughs> we always ate tortillas, and when we ran out of tortillas, we reached for the bread on top of the refrigerator, and it was green with mold. And my son Vicente would say, Mom, the bread is green. Just take the green off, it won't kill you. <laughs> Well, later in life, my son was in the United States Navy, and he was stationed in Kosovo. He said he was homesick, but when he saw the green bread over there, he remembered home. <laughs> anyway, like I said, I was 18, going to Avance. They were, I was able to achieve my GED. Avance even went out of their way to find a school that I could attend to. It was the San Antonio Independent School 
voca uh, vocational nursing. I graduated as a licensed vocational nurse, and I'm happy to say that I've been a licensed vocational nurse for 37 years. And Avanza has, been, has had such an impact in my life that it has gone to my children. When I attended Avanza, I only had three children. I got married, and then my husband then didn't like the fact that I was trying to advance with Avance. Well, obviously that marriage didn't work. I had two more children, and I've always taught my children that if I can do it, they can too. But I learned a lot from Avance, how to nurture my child, that I was my child's teacher, that they mimic what you do. From nutrition, I would always say, lettuce and tomatoes, we only ate them because it was in our, in, in our tacos or chalupas. We didn't know anything about the food group. <laughs> my, my children were small. They wore pillowcases as diapers because I couldn't afford pampers. While the real diapers were drying outside, they wore pillowcases. Now they can use them on their beds. <laughs> but like I said, I learned to nurture my children and that they learned through me. So when I insisted that they go to school, I have had five children and four out of five have graduated high school. Vicente is the only one who has gone to college. Like they said in the film, he has gotten his associate, and this is after he did four years in the United States Navy. He worked as a jet engine mechanic. He came back and earned his associate in child development in BAS in Mexican American history, and he has 36 hours in graduate school. He hopes to be a licensed practicing counselor. I understand he wants the CEO job. <laughs> anyway, and my daughter Elida, she's the one in the graduate uniform. She went to the United States Navy right after high school. She's only 34 years old, but she has been in the Army for 15 years, going on 16. She's an E7, which is Sergeant First Class, and I understand she's up for promotion for an E8. I have another daughter, Alejandra Galindo. She works at UPS at the airport. She does the weight and balance at the airport. She's responsible for that airplane having good weight and balance. I have another son, Jose Antonio Sanchez. He works at Apollo Gate. And my other daughter, Josefina Sanchez, unfortunately she did not graduate high school, but she also obtained her GED through Avance. I met Prince Charles at Avance, at Mirasol Courts. You should have seen the security there. I met uh, the former uh, Mayor Henry Cincinnatus, Maria Berriozabal, our councilwoman. So all these people had an effect in my life because if they were interested in little old me, maybe I could do better. And I, I emphasize that. When my son Vicente was working at a children's shelter, I said, you should be working for Avance. Tell them where you come from. He likes to dress like Mr. GQ. But I say, tell them where you come from. You come from the Mirasol courts. And you can succeed. You can be all you, you can be. Like I said, I learned to nurture my children and that they learn from everything that I do. And I want to congratulate the, all the dignitaries that are here that are going to start these new projects. As you can see, I am an example and I hope that there will be a lot more. I'm only one success story from Avance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Galindo, and as she mentioned, there are, there are many, many, many more uh, Mrs. Uh, Galindos out in the community and many, many more to come uh, through our partners and our research partners and re-grant partners. So let me just thank everyone again, our special guests, Congressman Gonzalez and all of our uh, special guests from uh, the various institutions and think tanks who joined us here today in person and over the web to celebrate with Avanza, this historic announcement uh, of our Kellogg Research uh, Project, Unlocking America's Potential. 
I believe that we could agree uh, that early childhood education is not just an education imperative, but it needs to be an economic and a national security priority. The research behind early education is irrefutable, as recognized by this administration in their Winning the Future Plan for Improving Education for the Latino Community. Research tells us that the best time to influence a child's intellectual development occurs when the brain is under intense development, which occurs during the first five years. Yet we see, as the congressman mentioned, governments across the United States cutting funding for early childhood and private contributions are decreasing. These facts occur in the face of a rapidly growing Latino community, the fastest growing in the United States, and yet have the lowest educational attainment levels. These trends, I believe, could have a negative effect on our national and economic security. These trends have a neg negative effect on our national security when we have 75% of our young people unqualified to enter the military ranks, while the growing number of young people are Latino and the most likely to drop out of school. These trends have a negative, negative impact on our economic security when we don't have a skilled labor force in place to replace the baby boom generation and who are uncompetitive in a global economy. We at Avance have been teaching an intense parent-child curriculum that addresses these issues in predominantly Hispanic communities for nearly 40 years. A program built, as Mrs. Galindo expressed and as Magda mentioned, that the mother is the first teacher and the home is the first classroom. So when we're talking about this particular research program, Unlocking America's Potential, you have to have three things. You have to have three things to unlock America's potential. First, you have to have the key. Then you have to open the door. And then you have to step through the door of opportunity to reach your full potential. We believe we have the key with our Avance Parent-Child Program. We believe that this Kellogg Research Grant allows us to open the door to reach all families across this country not just Latino families. And we believe that the results of this particular research project will give us the opportunity to walk through the door to reach our full potential. The real question then, when we're back here in four years, being able to, to share the results of our research, the real question is, will we as a great nation walk through that door? I believe we must both our national security and our economic security depend on it. Thank you all for coming and we will take questions from the press at this time. That was easy. <laughs> yes, ma'am. If you could please uh, identify yourself, please. You want to come forward, Magda? The, the research grant itself has four specific strategies uh, as we uh, go out across the country. Again, Magda shared with you that we have a, a, a research component and then as well uh, our re-grant partners. And she can speak specifically to uh, those four strategies as, as uh, you know, dictated uh, in the particular gift. Thank you. As Rick mentioned, there are approximately four to five different strategies that we're following. The first strategy was really to work and reach out to our research partners because we wanted to make sure that those that we reached out to, number one, were a 501c3 entity, and more importantly, they had a mission that is very similar to that of Avances. Also beyond that, we needed to make sure that they have extremely good community support and that they would be able to sustain the program after the project is over. So we call that the research aspect. More importantly, as we're building these partnerships, we are beginning to build a group of peer networks and that's going to be extremely important. We have succeeded in San Antonio, Texas for a little over 38 years 
and of course we've been very comfortable in our little niche but we are really excited to reach out to the rest of the communities because I'm sure there are opportunities for improvement we want to go beyond the four years we want to establish continuing improvement to our processes we would like to eventually even come up with a yearly forum and and enjoy it if people would say now that's a conference we don't want to miss next year so it's going to be that continuous uh, sharing of success stories and um, maintaining current with all of the concepts in early education as well we also have another aspect called the creative innovation innovations process and basically that's just going to work right in with our peer networking opportunities again always looking for the new concepts that will continue to enhance our program and uh, make it relevant to those families and children that we're trying to help worldwide because I'm sure that this is going to go beyond national at some point in the future um, and then of course we want to maintain and provide some global learning opportunities obviously it's not always feasible for people to just unite at a conference maybe we'll have a series of webcasts webinars conference calls focus groups uh, the sky's the limit I'm sure that the benefits that will be derived by all have not even been thought of yet Thank you. any other questions again thank you all for coming we appreciate uh, you sharing in this historic moment with us. Uh, I would also like to real quickly, I don't think I had the opportunity, but we have some of our, uh, part, our some of our Avance uh, employees as well that are here from uh, San Antonio and from Houston that are enjoying in this week's uh, Zero to Three conference that's occurring here. Uh, we have Jacqueline Skinner Davis and, and Rhonda Dunn, and we have as well uh, Bertha from San Antonio. Uh, and uh, so we want to thank each and every one of uh, our Avance family members for being here. And again, uh, thank you for enjoying, uh, joining in this particular uh, celebration. And just please stay tuned because uh, we're moving forward with unlocking America's potential. Thank you very much. Thank you.